It's time for another edition of Titans All Access. And coming up on this week's show... Take <laughs> 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 it feel like you mean it. Make it feel like you own it. Outside linebacker Arden Key's energy is infectious. Find out why he loves the game of football so much. Plus, the Titans head to Miami for the first time since the longest game in NFL history. Hear how the Titans survived a game that lasted more than seven hours. A new Titans All Access starts now. But there he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derrick Henry. Got Chris Moore, can he catch it? What a catch! Will Levis, Levis to Hopkins! Big Jeff fires up the intercept. Amani Hooker, there's Hopkins making the catch. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio for another edition of Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith. This is my favorite time of the year, and not just because the holidays are right around the corner. But the beginning of December is when we celebrate high school football in our great state. Last week, nine schools were crowned state champions during the Blue Cross Bowl games in Chattanooga. And on Tuesday, 10 players were announced as winners during the 2023 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards Luncheon at Nissan Stadium. In Class 4A, state champion Pearl Cone was well represented with two finalists and the eventual winner, Mr. Football himself, Keyshawn S. Tarleton. To get the full Tennessee Titans Mr. Football experience with Keyshawn, we invite you to listen up with Duncan here on Titans All Access. Mr. Football right here. Feeling good, feeling good. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2023 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards. There's obviously a lot of attention on these, these days and uh, wrapped it up in Chattanooga a couple days ago and it all culminates here with the Mr. Football Awards. So it's a, it's a special period of time for us uh, this time of year and um, the, the kids, it's a, such a special event for them. This is one of the special things that we do as an organization. Uh, football means so much in this state and while the Titans are the professional football team for the state, uh, the, the core, the foundation, the soul of football is, is in our communities. It's at the high school level. Whether they walk away with the big award or a plaque or whatever, they, they know walking away they're one of the best football players in the state of Tennessee. Please welcome to the podium our MC for today's event, the voice of the Titans, Mr. Mike Keith. This is a great day for everyone who loves football in the state. Let's go. The 2023 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football is Isaiah Groves East Robertson High School, Kelvin Perkins, Radarius Jackson, Sheffield High School, Jalen Mosley, Jackson Christian, Keyshawn Tarleton, Pearl Code High School. It's it's special for them because we try to kind of keep that under wraps, and so it's a surprise for us to see their eyes and look on their faces when they see the specialized jersey they have for them. They're in the Titans locker room, their family's there with them. It's a really special moment. All right, right here. Woo! Put the hat on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got that Mr. Football, boy. It's a dream come true for me. And I'm mic'd up, you feel me? Yes, sir! And I'm mic'd up. Real receiver one right here, you feel me? Real RB right here, that's y'all. Tune in, it's some goats too. That's part of that coach right here. But it's the goat right here, y'all. That's y'all, you feel me? Come to Pearl, he gonna get y'all right, I'm telling y'all. <laughs> oh, bro, I'm gonna go home and cry. I'm gonna go home and cry. It feels great to be the best quarterback, or the best in my class. Um, it's a dream come true for me. Um, uh, yeah, it just feels great for me to be one of the best quarterbacks in my class. It's a really special moment and to see, you know, see them be able to soak that in is really special. Crazy though. It's a real like dream come true. Once again, congratulations to all the winners of the 2023 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards. Still to come on Titans All Access, Coach Dave McGinnis joins me to break down the cheetah, Tyreek Hill. But up next, Arden Key is full of energy. Find out why after the break. 
It's time for the decision of the week, sponsored by Hughes and Coleman. Okay, in our 2023 um, Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee is Jeffrey Simmons. Selecting Jeffrey Simmons as the 2023 Tennessee Titans Walter Payton Man of the Year is a decision that just makes sense. The Titans drafted Simmons in the first round of the 2019 NFL Draft, and he has been a man of the people ever since. Whether it's a shopping spree with a kid for the holidays or work through his Give Him a Reason Foundation, Big Jeff has a big heart. Combine that with his greatness on the gridiron to see Titans Walter Payton decision that just makes the soul of football is is in the communities for the holidays or and you'll understand why his nomination is this week's decision of the week sponsored by Hughes and Coleman in the gun, rolling to his right, throws back across the middle, the pass is intercepted, Titans can come the other way, let's see if Hooker can score, he puts a move on, he's got green grass, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, end zone, penalty, no, 2 for Tennessee for the first time ever, wow, wow, Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio as Titans All Access continues. If you ever watch Titans outside linebacker Arden Key on the field during a game, you'll likely notice that he is always going, talking and moving around and talking. So when our Amy Wells visited with him earlier this year, she naturally had to ask him about his energy. And to no one's surprise, he was more than willing to open up for this week's Nissan Insider. Arden Key, you have been called a tone setter. What is the tone that you are setting? What is the Arden Key vibe? Very hyper, I got a lot of energy. You'll hear me before you see me. Ah! Y'all ain't talking about nothing! Y'all ain't talking about nothing! Y'all ain't talking about nothing! Oh! 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 I just, I just love to have fun, really. I love to have fun, I like to smile. I just like, especially when we have practice and stuff like that. If I can come in and just make it, make you feel better just 1%, then that's me. We talked about your vibe. Mike Vrabel has his very own special vibe. How do you guys mesh together with your two styles? I think Mike is just misunderstood. <laughs> if you understand Mike and understand that he only say things to get you to be the best you, then yeah, it's all fun again. Rolling to his right, under pressure, Sack! Oh my goodness, just what the doctor ordered. Key and Landry deck him back at the 10 yard line. Now you're in your sixth season as an NFL player. How are you different now than you were in season one? More locked in on details. The small details, because the small details are equal up to the big things. When you had an organization for so long, you really don't know anything else but that organization. Then once I, once I went to another organization, then it showed me a different way of doing things, a more successful way of doing things, and I kind of picked up on a successful tip. Now, you're from a bigger family in Atlanta. A bunch of twins in your family? You're a twin, there's a bunch of twins. How does something like that happen? Where does this twin thing come from? It started with us. Um, it started with me and my twin sister. I got a twin sister, and then she ended up having twin boys. And it was crazy when we first found out. It was crazy. Uh, we, didn't, we, we always knew that a twin skipped a generation. So, one, so if it was us, then maybe our kids' kids would have had the twin, but my twin ended up having a twin. Now, I kind of got jealous because I want a twin. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I didn't have it, so. That's crazy, but basketball players in your family, right? I'm the only football player. How did you of, end up playing football? I think it was my dad. My dad introduced me to football first. So it was football when I was eight years old, and then I didn't even play organized basketball until I was like 12, 13. So I was able to build the love for the game for football and then basketball was just something to keep me out of trouble. How good does it feel to be 
closer to that family, closer to Atlanta, back in that region. I would assume there's going to be a lot of keys at Titans games. Feels good for them to be literally three hours away. They can make that drive any day. We are so excited to have you here. I'm so excited to be here. Arden Key has tallied four sacks, one forced fumble, and eight solo tackles in his first season as a Titan, at least so far. Up next on Titans All Access, Dave McGinnis is here to talk Tyreek Hill. Stick around. Hey, Titans fans, it's Matt Moore. Former Tennessee Titan Javon Curse here. This is Coach Mack. What's up, everybody? Former Titan Keith Bullock here. Former Tennessee Titan Kevin Dyson. Be sure to watch Taste of Tennessee. The place, the food, the folks. This is a Taste of Tennessee. This is absolutely delicious. Exclusively on LG channels and LG OLED TVs. Titans All Access continues from the Bet MGM studio. I'm joined by my Titans radio broadcast partner, Coach Dave McGinnis, as we prepare for Monday Night Football against the Dolphins. Mike McDaniel has a special offense. He said when he went in there last year, he felt like he could get to a tongue of Iowa straight. He has. How's he done it? Well, he's done it. First of all, that you know, two is a little bit more mature in this league right now. He's healthy. But what we're looking at with this offense, first of all, it's a dynamic speed offense. You look, you look at it very, very quick. It doesn't take you long with the Cowboy on the film to see how much speed they have. And it, it, it's really a nuanced inflow RPO type of a system, but they've also got some really good checks. If they catch you in man to man, they're going up top, Mike. But he, look, he's learned how to operate the, the offense, much as you saw him do when he was at Alabama. I mean, they, they, they catered some of this offensive Tack to him, and so it's working pretty good for him. And he's got Tyreek Hill. And more than that. Yeah. But yes, he's, go ahead. Do all right, right, we're going to go beneath the surface now, powered by Microsoft. All right, I'm going to show you Tyreek Hill for this play. Here's there number he 10, the cheetah. All right, now let's watch it. Before you start it, Mike, too high safety look back here. So, Tua is looking at this right now. He's got a three by one formation set up right here right now, but he's looking at this. We're gonna see once this starts where the safety is gonna start creeping down. Now it becomes a post safety defense and post safety means you're in man to man. Watch the check that he goes to and watch where it goes. This is gonna be man to man now, all right? Man to man, you see him look at him, stutter and go. No way, goodbye, good night. He outruns not only the man on top of him in man to man, he outruns the safety angle also. This is the fastest player in the National Football League. Anytime you give him post safety, if the down and distance calls for it, he's gonna go. All right, let's take a look from behind. From behind, you got what you got, you got a four man rush that, that's starting up here, but they've already, he's already checked and seen what's going on. They get everything caved, it's a completely clean pocket to the left handed quarterback's left. I mean, and this right here is pitch and catch. The only thing that's stopping him is if he hit that wall with a W on it. It has been said that he runs a 4-1-ish 40. Do you buy that? Under 4-2? Well, he runs faster than anybody on the field. You see him kneeling down right here, looking at the check. He's looking for the check on this, on this defense. Single high safety. We talk about single high safety. This is the same team. You'd think that they would have learned. Single high safety, look at him, looking at him. It's the check. They put him in here to check man zone declaration. Now, he's not in a stance yet, is he? He's look, he, go, it's go, it's single high coverage. He started to run the post. Tua threw it back to his outside shoulder. This guy, running 120 miles an hour, made a move from the post back to the corner. Here we go. And yeah, the scary thing about him is he's not just world-class speed. He's also world-class quick as well. Well, absolutely. I mean, this guy's got it all, and he's not the only one, Mike. You know, as you well know, but they've got they've got a speed set up back there. And so if they catch you in this man to man at inopportune times, we've just seen two explosive plays back to back, basically in a series. And you're talking about Tyreek Hill, who through 12 games has nearly 1,500 yards receiving already in 2023. And he said he wants to be the first 2,000 yard receiver. Yeah, he may do it. Coach Mack, thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks for the look at the cheetah. We've got more coming up on this edition of Titans All Access right after this. This is Stadium in 60, a quick update on the Titans' new stadium presented by Nissan. The new Titan Stadium is being designed with sustainability in mind. Most stadiums built in the 1990s were designed to last 30 years. 
This stadium is being planned with a much longer lifespan in mind. Adam Noose is a Titan Senior Vice President and Chief Revenue Officer. This is a legacy project that is going to be something that is going to impact generations to come. And when you think about that, you think about functionality long term, sustainability long term, and some of that comes to the fan experience, uh, not just for our kids, but our kids' kids. Kellen DeCourcy is the Titans' new stadium project executive. You know, for the Titans organization to have a home that the Titans fans can just embody and own and, and have that um, um, home field advantage every given Sunday, I think is amazing. But then just what it means for the events on the next level um, to have these um, events that we don't get, uh, March Madness, college football playoffs, a Super Bowl, hopefully. Um, those are things that I'm just super excited about. Nashville's rising, but this will take us to the top. For the latest news, visit titansnewstadium.com. Usually the team's operations staff is in charge of taking care of flights, hotels, and generally any needs that may pop up during the season. However, it's not every day that you play a game that lasts for more than seven hours. So when I asked Titans Vice President of Operations Brent Akers to join me for a trip to Oak Ridge for our Follow Me Through Tennessee series, I had to get him to tell the story of when the Titans were last in Miami to open the 2018 season. I want to know what really happened when the Titans played the season opener at Miami in what turned out to be the longest game in NFL history, seven hours and eight minutes, yes. and you had the two long delays. Yes. Is the story true that someone or someone's from the ops staff went to the grocery store to get bread and peanut butter? True story. Okay. True story. We used to carry a trunk with us full of peanut butter and jelly. Okay. With all the bread in there typically, but when it happened, and I, I want to say, Mike, it was the second quarter started. Yeah. Uh, we started making PB&Js and the guys were hungry, so they came in and then they changed their sweat and socks, and undershirts. We started making PB&Js. Even the general manager was helping make <laughs> And then the second break, we started making more PB&J, and then we ran out of bananas, and ran up of oranges, then we went to half, more PB&Js, and then our post-game food came, which was a uh, mission barbecue. So next thing you know, in the third quarter, we're eating our post-game food. And then I get a call that we're out of bread and out of PB&Js. So I go to the concessionaire, and there's a friend of mine that works for the Dolphins, helping me get two more loaves of bread. So at the end of the game, I was out of peanut butter, we were out of barbecue, we were out of everything sitting there and everybody's about to lose their mind as you probably hear as well. And the quarterback at the time, Marcus, said, I really just want a pepperoni pizza. So Luke Morrow on our staff, I gave him my credit card. He goes into the concourse and gets a pizza. So Marcus is eating pizza. I don't know, maybe that was the fourth quarter at that point. Okay. And then next thing you know, players see it. I want a pizza. Oh, wow. Here we go. So next thing you know, Luke's up there, and he takes a cooler, and he fills a cooler full of personal pizzas. Players like pizza. I bet Chris and I handed out 7,000 cups of water on the side. I've never seen anything like it. I've never worked that hard for anything. Run Akers may have the most interesting job in the entire Titans organization, and so I'd love for you to hear the rest of our conversation on the most recent edition of the OTP, the official Titans podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. Next on Titans All Access, my three seat geek keys to victory against the Dolphins. We'll be right back. The tailback is Henry. Second and 10 at the 22 of the Colts. Levis 
Gibbs Henry bounces left, gets outside to the 50, to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. All hail the king! Touchdown Titans! 22 for 22 and a big six! Two explosive plays on offense. That's exactly what we need to start this afternoon off. Okay. It's time now for my three keys presented by SeatGeek. Key number one, score. The Dolphins are averaging 32 points per game. They average 428 yards per game. They can run and they can pass. They are going to score. The Titans scored 28 points last Sunday. They'll likely need at least that on Monday night. Key number two, drive the ball. If you drive the football, you keep the ball away from the Miami offense, and that's a good thing. And Miami's red zone defense is not fantastic. If you can get inside the Dolphins 20, you have a good shot at a touchdown. Key number three, don't miss a shot at a turnover. Tua Tungavailoa has thrown 10 interceptions, and he's fumbled 10 times. The Dolphins' other players have fumbled an additional 10 times. One way to limit the Dolphins' possessions is to force them into turnovers. Miami will turn the ball over. Don't miss a chance when you have a shot at a takeaway. That's going to do it for this edition of Titans All Access. Remind you to tune in to this weekend's game, Monday night, as the Titans take on the Dolphins. Kickoff is set for 7.15 Central Time. Titans Countdown gets you ready at 6 p.m. Central on Monday. That'll do it for this week's edition of Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith, and we'll see you next time.